Ireland have some World Cup squad question marks. Everything's rosy in the green camp. Make no mistake, Grand Slam winners, an incredible 18 months. But we are exactly five months from the start of the Rugby World Cup and there are still some question marks. And I think this is a perfect time to bring this up, given that Ireland only have two warm-up games in the summer. So these Champions Cup games for Leinster take on even more significance when you're thinking about how that final squad for Andy Farrell is going to shake down. And uh, that's what I want to get into on this video. I'm Tim. This is Egg Chasers. Please, if you haven't already, hit subscribe. I'm hoping I earn your subscription on this video uh, and leave your comments as well on what you make of my predicted Ireland Rugby World Cup squad and where I think there are still some issues to be addressed. And one of them, you can see a picture of Josh van der Fleer. This is why this is the perfect time to do it, because Josh van der Fleer is injured for Leinster. And I was really curious to see what Leinster would do without their talismanic number seven. And it's quite revealing. Uh, now, I will be at Leinster working for BT Sport on this game. So um, I'm going to have a little dig into uh, the mind of Leo Cullen. I'll see if Andy Farrell's there and I can grab him for a chat as well. I'm fascinated about this area. But Josh van der Fleer, World Player of the Year, he's so good. When he's injured, what do you do? And this is one of the questions that Ireland have got and what Leinster have done uh, for this Champions Cup game is they've put Caelan Doris on the open side and not picked Scott Penny, who's one of the contenders for that open side flank of berth. So that's one question mark. Another question mark is what happens if something happens to Hugo Keenan. And I, th I think there are some question marks, particularly when you add the wingers into the mix. Who might the final outside back spots, back three spots go to in a Rugby World Cup squad. Now, the Irish squad picks itself largely at the minute and you can probably predict out of the 33 names, I reckon you could probably predict confidently 28, 29 of them, maybe even 30 of them. So let's go through it very briefly. Loose head prop, uh, Andrew Porter. Now what I've done is I've put um, in regular text um, font, sorry, the names of people that are absolutely nailed on, no question they're there. The ones in italics are the ones where they're like, yeah, they're more than likely going, but let's not say it's completely out of the realms of possibility that they that they miss out. So on that basis, Keen Healy and Dave Kilcoyne will be backing up Andrew Porter. Uh, in terms of the player who is starting, obviously, oh, obviously it will be, oh, I'll, let my, I'll get myself out of the way for this, shall I? Yeah, let's do that. Uh, Andrew Porter, and Keen Healy, uh, more than likely on the bench. Dave Kilcoyne as the backup. Three excellent, very experienced um, front row forwards. And in the case of Keen Healy, his fourth Rugby World Cup, which is incredible. Hook, uh, tight head prop, sorry. Tyg Furlong, Finlay Beelham, Tom O'Toole. This was one of the big question marks going into the Six Nations tournament. Do Ireland have the depth? Oh no, Tyg Furlong's out. And that's one of the massive positives for Ireland is how well both Finlay Beelham and Tom O'Toole came through. And uh, yeah, Furlong and Beelham will be the ones. And, and the game that I've got in mind when I'm selecting this side, uh, Ireland play Romania, then they play Tonga. But it's their third pool match against South Africa at the Stade de France. That is going to be when full bore Ireland, you know, uh, arrive. And this is the team I've got in mind when I'm, when I'm selecting that. Uh, hooker, Dan Sheehan, who's elevated himself up with Julian Marchand and... Uh, Julian Montoya and uh, Malcolm Marks to be a truly world-class hooker. Rona Kelleher is class as well. And Rob Herring, under pre under a bit of pressure at Ulster from Tom Stewart, who looks like a hell of a player. Uh, but I, I expect Rob Herring just to hold off that challenge before the World Cup, but we'll see. Um, for, and uh, it'll be Rona Kelleher backing up Dan Sheehan. Locks. So three absolute certs. James Ryan, Tideburn, as long as he's fit, Ian Henderson as well. Ryan Baird, more than likely to go to. So will Ireland go for an, another second row in their squad or an extra back row? Remember, the squad is 33 people. So I'm thinking there'll be maybe 18, 18 forwards, perhaps, and 15 backs. It's probably how I'd imagine it, it being split. Uh, starting, if fit, James Ryan, Tideburn. I've gone for Ryan Baird on the bench. I, I, I love Ian Henderson. He's got that... Uh, that Ulster farmer strength looks like a giant baby. He plays like a, an absolute warrior. Love him. And so probably it will, will be Ian Henderson. I just love Ryan Baird. I think there's an outside chance he could end up, by the end of the World Cup, 
uh, being a, a starter for Ireland. I, I think I think that much of him. So anyway, he's on the bench for me. Uh, back row. Four absolute nailed on names. And this is where it gets interesting for Ireland because who takes those extra couple of spots on the plane? So far there, you've got uh, nine and uh, you've got 17 players. I think there will be one more player added to that pack of forwards that will go to the World Cup. And who that's going to be is really interesting. So the back row obviously will be uh, Caelan Doris, Josh van der Fleer, Peter Omani. But there's five contenders there for a final spot in that squad. Now, you could take a second row. And Kieran Treadwell's in the middle there. I think more likely is that there's an extra back row taken. And left to right, you've got Gavin Coombs, uh, Nick Timoney, uh, uh, Scott Penny and Kean Prendergast. And that does, by the way, demonstrate the, the brilliant system they have domestically in Ireland where they can spread their talent across the four provinces. Kean Prendergast moved from Leinster to Connacht, where he currently plays. So you've got a contender there. Um, you've got Gavin Coombs of Munster, Nick Timoney of Ulster, Scott Penny of Leinster, and Kean Prendergast of Connacht. I think one of those is going on the plane. This is, I think this is the hardest spot to pick in the whole island squad. I I think it might be Kean Prendergast. Although I could imagine him going Kieran Treadwell, an, an extra second row, because Henderson, Tideburn and Ryan Baird can play in the back row. Um, equally, Kean Prendergast I've picked because he can play second row if needed. So, but I, I think that's a that, that's a total toss up. Um, so I'm not going to bet any, bet any of my mortgage on that. But that might be how I pick it at this point. Let me know what you think in the comments. So that's that's the forward pack basically. 18 names there. Fairly easy to select, except for maybe one spot, and that would be the pack to play South Africa if everyone's fit and firing. Uh, Jack Conan coming back into some form and getting himself a spot on the bench. Ian Henderson might make it onto the bench, as I mentioned. There you go. As for the backs, well, fairly fairly simple. Jameson Gibson Park, standout number one. Connor Murray on the decline, but still good and very experienced. Uh, and Craig Casey, the, the new blood, backing him up, um, who looked handy when he came off the bench against France and started against Italy. Those would be the two the two experienced players uh, to start. Fly half, again, picks itself. Jack Crowley seems to have got that third spot, so I, I don't expect that to change at this point. Ross Byrne, an able deputy. Hopefully Johnny Sexton's all good. Centre, uh, Stuart McCloskey, I think his spot could be under threat. He seems to have won that battle about who is the, the fourth centre, and I imagine Andy Farrell will take four centres. However, Jimmy O'Brien, the flexibility he offers and a potential 13, will will that mean he takes an extra outside back? Remember, I'm allocating 15 spots here for the backs, and that's 10 now, so leaving only five spots for uh, the back three. Um, Gary Ringrose and Robbie Henshaw, obviously, are going to be the starting centres if everyone's fit. Now, back three. Bearing in mind, 15 names. And if you count Jimmy O'Brien, who can play centre, can play wing. In fact, he's playing wing for Leinster this weekend, which is another thing I was looking out for. Uh, where Jimmy O'Brien fits into the picture, he's on the wing. So, yeah, that would that would suggest to me that he will be, that versatility he offers, he will get in, in the squad. And then that final outside back position. What do you do? Uh, four main contenders. Left to right, Jacob Stockdale, excuse me, uh, Jordan Lama, Andrew Conway, who's been injured, and Robbie Balakoon. They've all got they've all got upsides. They've all got limitations. Andrew Conway's the one to watch because he has been injured. I, don't, I, I, I haven't checked the extent of that injury, but if he gets anywhere near the form he has shown for Ireland in the past, he, I mean, he was the starting winger when he was fit. Now, Mac Hansen has taken that spot. The one that I find quite interesting, I, I'm a massive fan of Robbie Balakoon. He's got gas to burn. Uh, but the one I was at the Ulster, uh, Leinster Ulster game last weekend at the Aviva Stadium, and I was watching Jacob de Stockdale very carefully. Now there are some limitations to his game. A lot of people have pointed out defensive, defensively, but I think he's coming back into some form, Jacob Stockdale. And I know there's only two World Cup warm-up games in the summer. I don't know. 
if I had to pick now, today, I think I'd go Jacob Stockdale. But again, much like the Key and Prendergast selection in the in the forwards, I'm not hundred percent sure. But th- that is that is my island squad, and um, obviously with the uh, the back three selection picks itself from the Grand Slam winning team just gone. Very settled look to that back line, isn't it? If everybody's fit, Bundyaki on the bench because if a fullback goes off, then Robbie Henshaw can can juggle in there. If a winger goes off, Gary Ringrose can move out there, and Bundyaki is is oh, he's just brilliant. So that's how I expect when if everyone's fit and when Ireland are playing South Africa. But as I said, there are some question marks, and that is what it's all about. South Africa on. It's the third weekend of games, isn't it? So we're talking like the towards the end of September. And uh, that is what it's all about. That game there against South Africa. I mean, very, very settled from an Irish point of view. It's not like uh, some other nations, England, uh, where there's a lot of positions where you're not sure where we'll be five months from now. You know pretty much where Ireland are going to be five months from now, but there are nonetheless some interesting... Uh, decisions to be made by Andy Farrell and a lot of a lot to be played for in these final games of the season not to mention in the two World Cup warm-up games that Ireland have got in the summer so uh, game on five months we're getting there it'll be here before you know it which is why you need to hit subscribe if you haven't already I really hope I've earned your subscription today and I, I also hope I will see you on the next video nice one